cold. This is the most north I have ever been. This is the polar bear capital of the world. This is Churchill, Manitoba. And I got here by sitting on this train for two days. This is Via Rail's most northern route, starting in Winnipeg and heading straight north for over a thousand kilometers across the prairies until we cross into the permafrost region of the tundra, 48 hours later. Where did everyone go? Arriving in the remote town of Churchill, Manitoba, best known as the polar bear capital of the world. Not only will I show you one of Via Rail's least known adventure routes and what two days aboard this train is like, but also how a small city of 800 people managed to stay safe while along the migratory path of 800 polar bears. And yes, that's a one-to-one -one ratio of people to polar bears. It's been one of the most memorable trips to date and I'm glad I got to do it all with my dad. The channel is Downy Live, I'm Michael. Let's get this one started. So to start, we booked our tickets and jumped onto a plane from Vancouver to Winnipeg, where this train trip begins. If you, if you look at my dad, it looks like we're backpacking across Europe. <laughs> we're just taking one train. So our trip starts here in Winnipeg. We are at the intersection of Maine and Portage, which if you're Canadian, you know it's the windiest intersection in Canada. And the fact that it's minus five degrees doesn't make it any more enjoyable. Well, it couldn't be any more fitting as we leave Winnipeg that it's starting to snow. I'm in front of the station right here, <sighs> taking my big last breath of fresh air because once I step inside this building and on the train, the mask has to be on the entire time. That means my mask is on at all times for the next 48 hours. Hence, the standing in the snow. <sighs> All right, let's do this. And this is Winnipeg Union Station. Very nice, very quiet. So we actually have a little bit of time until our train leaves. So inside the station here is the Winnipeg Railway Museum. Just up these stairs, they're actually on tracks one and two that they've covered and blocked off for use of the museum but it's still on the actual tracks. This steam locomotive is exactly what you expect when you think of an old fashioned steam locomotive. It was made in 1872. CPR number one. This is the first train by CPR. Well, that was a very surprising and impressive little addition here to the station that I didn't know about. So if you're here in Winnipeg, highly recommend the train museum here. Along with the Railway Museum, there are historic photographs depicting the station's importance in history and why it has been designated as a National Historic Site in Canada. And with that, it's time to board. One, two, three, four, at least five cars long. What do you think? Uh, it's exciting, very exciting. <sighs> and there we are. Quick and easy check-in. Leaving Winnipeg, Canada's seventh most populated city, is not the most scenic route in Canada, but it is perhaps one of the most important as it is at the center of Canada, making it a transportation hub, often called the gateway to the west. All right, here we go. But in today's case, it's our gateway to the north. Normally a dining car and a sleeping car are available, but due to COVID-19, they're all closed. So the only option for us is to remain seated in these very seats for the next 48 hours. And with that, it's time to get comfortable. Just like that, we're out of the city and it's probably gonna look a lot like this for the next two days. Flat and snowy. If you wanna travel like a pro, you gotta up your foot game. So because the train is so long and there are very few menu options on the train, we opted to bring our own food for at least today. We stopped and got a falafel before boarding the train so we can have that for lunch. And the only time you can take your mask off on the train is when you're eating or drinking. So time for lunch. I'm gonna have my falafel now. I hope I don't feel awful afterwards. <laughs> But it, I have to say this, it is the basics. This yeah. is about as basic as you can get. Not luxury. Not luxury. But very relaxing. Literally nothing to do. 
for the next 48 hours. Has not taken him long to be rocked to sleep. With most of southern and central Manitoba being prairie farmland, I spent the next few hours looking out at farm after farm roll past until I started to just film the gravel roads that would cross the tracks from time to time as they became the most interesting things in sight. So after the excitement of rolling through a small town, we're quickly back to empty fields again. And it feels like the right time to ask my dad why he decided to come on this trip in the first place. Because you invited me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I never say no. Yeah, it's a good attitude to have. I've learned as you get older in life, never say no. Opportunities come along and there's not that much time on the other side to, to say I'll do it later. Even if that means sleeping in a chair for two nights? Ask me in two nights. Yeah. <laughs> This train, which currently only runs once a week, is the only dryland connection to the town of Churchill, which doesn't have a road in or out, making this train a vital and the most affordable way for locals and tourists alike to access this remote town. If I'm still awake while the train stops in the station, I try to get off at each one, because they're all different in their own way, and honestly, you never know when you're gonna get to stretch your legs again. And the first stop of this trip is... Wow. This is Dauphin Station, made by the Canadian National Railway here in 1912. So we've, we've got to stop here, a fresh air break in Dauphin, Manitoba, as they're loading a few people. But it's given us a good chance to get out and see the train we're riding on. It has two locomotives, a baggage car, two economy class cars, one lounge car, which is closed, and one sleeping car for staff and whatnot at the very back. Where did everyone go? There's no one else on the platform. I think I, I gotta get back. Oh, rolled my ankle. Woo. Sun's getting ready to set. Set the mood lighting in the train. We're gonna have uh, our dinner. And I'll be off to bed in no time, I'm sure. We'd be off to bed if we had a bed. Right, right. <laughs> As night quickly fell and my dad got into his book, we started to smell something burning, but then quickly realized it was just the floor heaters from the 1960s turning on as the outdoor temperatures dropped. Well, it's been uh, steady, peaceful, and we've met some very nice people along the way. Yeah, we, we luckily <laughs> sat behind Calia and Scott. Now every time the train stops and I get off, I discover another part of the country that I've never seen before. We've now been on the train for eight and a half hours and we are in Saskatchewan. Look at this little speeder all lit up. How cute is that? With the lights there. I love what these little towns do to make them cute. They're great. I wish I could stay here at night. I'll add it to the list. Gotta come back. Now, it's time to sleep. My dad has pulled down his toque to cover his eyes and is using his parka like a sleeping bag. Whereas I, on the other hand, managed to fall asleep with a lot less. But I woke up three hours later when we came to our next stop, where we met Brittany in La Paz, Manitoba. So, Dad, oh. thoughts? It's 4 a.m. 4 a.m. It's uh, very cold. Oh, here's oh. the station manager. Oh, ah. yeah. <laughs> Is that cool on YouTube? Yeah. Cool, I want to be in it. You do? Yeah. Sure. You want to tell me what you're doing with the hose and whatnot, or what you do sure. with the train? Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> cool. What do I say? This is Brittany, a rail car technician. What's Hi going guys. On? What are we doing? I'm um, currently 693. Came in from Winnipeg, and we are servicing it putting water on it and checking the engines and making sure they're all good to go up north. Awesome, and that's the water. This is the water hose. Is it, is it freezing? <laughs> it is freezing and it is very cold. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do love it, it's great. I love working on the railway and the trains are so cool. They're just majestic. They are. They're very cool. That's why we're out here. This is my dad. Yeah. And... Hey, dad. <laughs> Where are you guys heading to? Churchill. Nice, I was working up there in July. Amazing. Yeah. Have you ever been there? No. You guys will just, Love it. It was absolutely breathtaking, amazing. I just, I love it. That's awesome. That's what we're hoping Everything. to. It was wonderful. Uh, Brittany, I'm so happy I woke up and got off here. And now well, I'm, I'm glad you. that your 4 a.m. stop was well worth it. In the paw, Manitoba. Come on out and Woo! meet Brittany. <laughs> Have a good one. Bye, guys. Thanks, Brittany. Safe travels. Back to our seats for a few more hours of sleep before we're into day two, where again, our only job is to sit back 
and enjoy the view along the rails as we roll into the tundra. Now, one thing that shocked me is that due to the below freezing temperatures and the permafrost soil constantly freezing and thawing between seasons, the rail switches have to be switched manually. By the end of the day, we'd eaten through all of our snacks and we still had about 24 hours left on the train, which meant that we're getting pretty hungry. And since the dining car was closed and the train had limited meal options available, the train service manager had a pretty creative idea for us. So one, two, four. One. 204 778 uh, we would like to order uh, a garden special so an interesting turn of events have just occurred we have arrived in Thompson Manitoba it's 2 30 in the afternoon but they're doing a crew change and boarding passengers for 5 p.m. we will not leave the station until 5 p.m. so we have two and a half hours which means we can order pizza it's for delivered. We're on the CN train, the Via Rail, the Via Rail train, and uh, we're at the train station, and we'd like it delivered here at 4:30 because that's when they're opening the doors to the train. So while we're waiting in Thompson, we pretty much have the whole train to ourselves. My dad, and then we have our neighbors here, it says Kalia and Scott, who've been sitting in front of us. Nice young couple from Whitehorse, originally from Australia, yeah. but uh, been nice and fun to chat with. And that's kind of one of the things I like about the train is it's pretty social because you're kind of trapped together for 48 hours <laughs> so yeah <laughs> make friends cutting it close it's supposed to be here at 4 30 we're leaving soon the train is now boarded still no pizza oh i think we're in luck we got it pizza time <laughs> i think we're gonna be okay now 16 hours we're set, we're happy. Oh yeah, Scott. That's good pizza. Mm. Well, the sun sets in about an hour, so I'm gonna watch that and pretty much off to sleep, I think. And with that, we'd had our last stop before our arrival in Churchill. And looking out at the sunset, I'm thinking about how harsh and remote the North is and how lucky I am to just sit here and enjoy this unique and beautiful landscape from the warmth of this train. While in 2017, these very tracks had been washed out during a spring flood, stopping the train from running for a year and a half, leaving locals stranded and forced to fly in food and goods, making life expensive and difficult. It's a reminder to get out and experience life when you can. Because as COVID has reminded us all, you never know when it'll get canceled, which is why I was so quick to book this trip with my dad while we still could. This year is the perfect time to explore your backyard and your country, because you never know what wonderful experiences, places, or people you'll come across. But it's always worth the adventure. And luckily enough, I got to see my first ever Aurora Borealis, also known as the Northern Lights. Look at that. Via rail, so important to Canada, it's on our $10 bill. Breakfast time. Breakfast in the north. And once the sun came up, we were pulling into Churchill, the polar bear capital of the world, pretty much right on time at 9 a.m. Which means the train trip is over, but the rest of our trip is just getting started. Thank you very much. Thank that you. was a wonderful trip. Well, after two days on this thing, I think I'm ready to get off and continue the adventure. We are in the polar bear capital of the world. I'm here to see some polar bears. I'm traveling with my dad. I'm Mike, the channel's Downy Live. I don't know where I'm going next, but I know I want you there with me. So you can subscribe by clicking on my face right here, or you can watch my last video right here. Don't forget to stick around, because I want to show you the polar bears.